Okay, on to another story that I think maybe isn't getting the coverage that it requires. Um, you'll remember a few weeks ago we, uh, we spoke to a New Zealand businessman who was locked up, essentially ransomed by the Iranian justice system. Uh, he'd been running a coffee business over there and came back to New Zealand after being held for months in custody in a in a, an Iranian prison, and he had an amazing story to tell. In the context of, I would say, the revolution that is going on in Iran right now, a quiet revolution uh, from people who simply want to be able to live with freedom. Um, and Iran has a troubled and tumultuous history. It is currently under the rule of the Ayatollahs, and that is a religious the intolerant regime that in particular cracks down hard on women and women's rights to live uh, in freedom or enjoy the same freedoms that men do and it is religiously intolerant. But it's very hard to get uh, news out of Iran because of the repressive nature of the regime. Joining us now to discuss what is going on and someone who is still connected and originally from Iran is Auckland, and I, I don't use the term in a derogatory sense, Auckland socialite. Uh, I'm going to use that term because I'm not quite too sure how else to describe her. Um, Gilda Kirkpatrick. Gilda, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for being with us. What should I call you if not socialite? Um, good morning, John. Well, I think that was a term that was used quite a few years ago. Like, I've been here for... 32 years and I think for the past <clears throat> 27 years or something I've kind of been in and out of um, media not for anything specific just because um, you know I kind of always been <clears throat> sorry I've got a bit of a cold yeah always been in the you know social scene different charities um, being involved with um, quite a few you know Mm. different stuff and always and you know when you are a foreign and especially you know say 27 years ago you kind of stand out um mm. and i'm kind of a person that you know i have a lot to say usually so i kind of don't blame you do because. we've had the odd spat on twitter gilda but when i <clears throat> see you tweeting and talking about events in iran i get the feeling these are very close to your heart and uh part of you is still i guess in iran I take it you still have friends, family, and connection there that you are in touch with. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Mm. Um, so we kind of, you know, majority of Iranians who have left Iran and are living abroad, they left Iran um, not because the country is not the most beautiful country and all that. It's because of the government and the oppressive regime. So uh, part of all of us about 5 million Iranians overseas is still stuck in Iran and um, you know um, the love is there however there is a regulation and you know the, the ones who could get out of Iran we got out because we couldn't handle being um, ruled over by dictators and the rest of the people who are there either they had too much love for the country or they actually couldn't get out um, for whatever reason so yeah Things are changing, though, and it doesn't seem like this quiet revolution is going to end. What are you hearing from friends, families and, and connections in Iran? I am reading on a weekly basis of high-profile high people, chefs, actors being killed or imprisoned by the regime as they try and keep a lid on this growing unrest. What are you hearing from your connections in Iran as to the situation there right now? Yeah, that, that's correct. Um, you, you know, this uh, revolution has started with um, a ki killing of a young girl um, over her um, not so sort of um, tight hijab. And it kind of, um, so to be honest, it actually started 2019. There was an uprising and um, it, it was huge. It was in the Western media. But because of the coronavirus and all that, it kind of fizzled down. And, and now that everything is to normal, um, people are still holding that revolution and carrying that. And it's needed to ignite again, which the death of Sarah, uh, Sarah Masa Amini 
brought that um, you know to to the scene. Um, so that's how it started in in the West because of um, you know concerns over um, you know not discussing Islam or all that. The Western media has taken that approach of. Um, you know, it's about women's rights and it's a feminist movement. It is far from feminism movement. It, it has got nothing to do with it. It's that is one very tiny section of it. The system in Iran is absolutely rotten, um, and people are fed up with it, and they want the regime gone, and they are dying in the street every day trying to bring that home. I um, mean, the latest thing that I, I've been, you know, talking and hearing coming out of Iran, uh, there, there, there are emergency scenarios which the Western society is um, ignoring. And when I say that, I'll come back to it. That why do we think that Western society could help? Um, at the moment, the, the, you know, uprising, the revolution is across Iran. It's a huge country. It's north, it's south, it's west and east. It's in the middle of the country. It's everywhere. All these different cities, people are in the street fighting, getting killed, getting tortured, getting arrested. Um, the problem right now that they're facing is that they don't have any um, medical um, setup that can help them because the government has is um, beating, bullying, stopping the, medic um, the doctors and hospitals to treat these people. They are scared to go to get treatments for, you know, um, the bullets they receive, beatings or whatever that they're doing to them. Um, they are scared to go because they get arrested if they go to the hospital or to the medical center. They beat and imprison the doctors and nurses who are trying to help these people. So they're interfering um, into the medical field, which is a major human rights issue that they're stepping on. on. They are stopping the medical uh, staff to do their job that they, you know, uh, took an oath for. So that's a major human rights issue that's being ignored. Um, the second one is um, our judicial system is very, uh, very faulty. They, it is not based on what uh, the Western world is, um, you know, based on it changes it, it's got a lot of islamic law a lot, lot of exceptions that the regime have put in there so um nobody can have it like you can't get a lawyer if they want to take you to prison they won't allow you to get a lawyer they'll just pick you up from the street they take you to jail torture you they can kill you they do they have been doing it for the past six weeks we've been witnessing this not that they haven't been doing this for past 43 years but in past four, um, six weeks, uh, it's just become more escalated and they become more um, aggressive uh, about their approach. So right now we've got these prisoners that are very young people in, um, you know, in jail, getting killed and nobody's um, able to speak for them. They're not even allowed lawyers. They, they kill them and they give the body to the parents or they just throw the body somewhere and nobody knows where they are. That is another major step on human rights. Um, um, also, you know, 460 something people during this revolution uh, process and 60 of them are kids, they're children, like young children wow. as young as four. Yeah, and nobody's talking about this. And um, I was in this thing, which I was listening to Abir Al uh, Sahlani, who is um, she's an Iraqi um, woman who lives in Sweden. She's um, part of the center right party, sorry, center party, and uh, she is in European Union. And um, you know, we we're putting these concerns, or people from Iran, they were putting these concerns to her that, look, this is an emergency. This is like what's happening is, you know, why is nobody talking about it? And um, she said, well, you know, we talk about Ukraine because Ukraine scenario is very straightforward. And um, it's um, it doesn't involve much. It's the invasion of Russia to Ukraine. And it is a comfortable area for, for European Union to get behind it. But Iran is too complicated. It's a Muslim country and it's too far and it's too complicated. and you know, and it's such a shame because um, 
you know, there are all these establishments that are in place, like United Nations and all these other groups that continuously, you know, they're receiving funds. Their job is to overlook and, um, you know, uh, defend uh, people's right. But unfortunately, they, they just, um, you know, have meetings with whoever they want and they who, do nothing about it. Who, in terms of neighbours in the region, supports the regime in Iran? Who from outside Iran is invested in the continuation of that regime? Or is it just that no one anywhere really cares or wants to get involved? Um, of course they care because, um, you know, they all have, um, regardless of the sanction, they're still getting gas and oil and, um, you know, the strategic area that Iran is, it's very important for everybody in the region. It's important for Russia, it's important for Israel, it's important. Uh, Russia is an ally with Iran, as you've seen in this Ukraine war, Iran has been aiding Russia with um, drones and even foot on the ground um, in Ukraine. Um, so Russia is definitely an ally. Um, Iran has got, you know, their tentacles in the neighboring country. They are supporting terrorist groups in, um, you know, uh, that whole of like Lebanon, Syria, Palestine, they've got, they're supporting uh, some in Pakistan and Afghanistan, sorry, not Pakistan, Afghanistan. They are supporting people in Libya, in Sudan, in um, um, even, you know, uh, in, um, where is it? Sorry, uh, just um, forgotten the name, sorry. But uh, so they've got their tentacles everywhere. They've got people everywhere. And um, they are the ones who are creating Venezuela, sorry, that's the name. They are the ones who are creating, you know, unrest in the regions and um, they get benefit out of it. So it concerns the world, but um, it seems everybody just wants to stay back because somehow they get a little bit of a benefit here and there. What do you think is going to happen, Gilda? Because it seems to me, I, I can't, from my very limited knowledge of what's happening there, <clears throat> see, I mean, eventually it seems to me the regime's just going to run out of people to kill. Um, and I don't see the revolution, which is absolutely genuine and widespread by a number of people, how do they beat that regime? Because no one is coming to help them. We can talk about it from outside, but if you're out there on the streets in Iran getting beaten, calling for more freedoms, where's the end game here? Is there one? Well, <clears throat> according to what I've, you know, been um, getting from all these speeches and talks and discussions, um, you're absolutely right. There is nobody from the outside who's going to help um, the Iranian people. Um, they have very limited resources in Iran. They really don't have access to arms. They, you know, have no su no support, and are dealing with a regime that are bringing, you know, um, weapons and tanks to, you know, to uh, kill their own people. Um, and although you are saying, well, they can't kill everybody, but the reality is, Iran has got a population of eighty million. So, um, well, apparently, a hundred and. Uh, 14,000 people currently under arrest for protesting and most of those people face the death penalty. 14,000. Yeah, that's 000. correct. So wow. That's, that's correct. Well, this regime will do anything to hang on to power and um, I really think, um, you know, it needs to be addressed. I mean, the simplest thing that can be done is to stop um, aiding the regime by by having diplomatic ties uh, and dealings with with this regime. I mean, if all the you know countries that the Western countries can cut tie with the regime and stop um, you know kick their ambassadors out and stop dealing with them, so uh, in terms of money. And they'll become more limited in order to one support all of their um, terrorist yeah. tentacles across the world, but also um, they will have to rethink um, what they're doing in Iran and how it, they 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 won't they can't kill eighty million people, correct? But they will kill a lot. So I think uh, cutting political ties. Um, 
sending the ambassadors back to Iran and not doing any deals with them, um, just uh, boycotting them from the international scene uh, could be a great help from from the rest of the world. Yeah. And um, Iranians have been lobbying, they've been asking, they've been begging for that, but uh, it doesn't seem to... I mean, they, they do give some um, condemnation here and there, some, you know, but they don't do anything for the people of Iran, you know, mm. five less um, officials to deal with over things that never come to fruition is not yeah. really helpful. When were you last back in Iran? I've been in 32 years. I've been back there twice. Um, and that's because I had to go back over some legal stuff uh, with mm. my yeah. parents, you know, my mother. Yeah. And um, yeah, but I, it's not a country that I would go if I don't have to. I, yeah. I, I, it's a it's a beautiful place. It's just, you know, the moment you walk in there and you see all these oppressive uh, people, you know, and yeah. the way you're being treated, especially as a woman, it's... It just breaks your heart. Yeah. Gilda, fascinating talking to you. I thank you for taking the time today. And it is a tough issue, but one we don't want to forget about at the platform uh, because it is about the very fundamentals of freedom uh, of expression and freedom of people to live their lives, no matter what their religion, no matter where in the world they are. So I thank you very much indeed uh, for talking to us today. Well, thanks for giving uh, me this opportunity to raise the voice of are people there who really have um, no, not, you know, nothing else to help them. Um, so it's just raising awareness, I think, at this point is the only thing we can do. Yeah. Good Thank on you, you, Gilda. Gilda Kirkpatrick. Mm. Um, oh, gosh, I'm going to call her a freedom fighter rather than a socialist uh, right now because that's what, what she's into.